Hey everybody, my name is Frankie, this is Rich. Today is a very special interview. Speaking from the heart, I, I met Rich at an SVB event. Shout out to SVB again, Silicon <laughs> Valley Bank, where I was invited to come to art gallery. I didn't really know what the background was. I just know SVB, I know that my boy Ronnie, really good person, shout out to Ronnie. And I know they're people and I know they're good people. So just the fact that they told me to come out to an event and come support this business, I was there. Come to find out, I meet Rich and just has an incredible story. And it ties into like, beautifully, like I was asking him some questions and it ties into some of the things that we're doing here at Monify. So, you know, what I wanna take a second here is, Rich, I wanna give you, you know, the floor to kind of give a, a, a shout out to what you're building, kind of tell people, you know, what, what your core business is and, yeah. and, you know, how it came to be, I would love to hear a little bit more about it and let the, the world know. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate y'all having me, first of all. This is, it's an honor. My name is Richard Samuel. I'm the owner of Richard's Art Gallery here in Austin, Texas. You know, up until about two weeks, it was just one, but we just opened our second location. So we got two galleries now, but Let's go. you know, it's a, it's been a long journey. We're, we're two years and eight months in right now. It feels like 10, Yeah. you know, cause there was times when I was doing everything in here by myself and teaching the classes, the marketing, the Facebook, the socials, the, POS systems, running the events, everything. No. It's a community space, it's an event venue, it's an art gallery, it's a, a place for opportunity, it's a place for self-expression, it's, you know, it's big. It's the it's the third place. And I kind of want to go into that because this was an untraditional route. You didn't start with art. I don't think it, I mean, you said you've always had it in the background. Yeah. How did that come to be You from, you know, where you started that untraditional route and now you're here? Like, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up my entire life thinking that I was supposed to be a football player. Yeah. You know, that was my passion. Art was like my safe space. I'd leave football practice and go paint. I got you. you know, my entire life. But, you know, it got to a situation when I retired from playing football. I yeah. played for 22 years. It was a long time. I wanted to kind of just take a break. And I was like, let me jump. Let me jump into the art world. Let me go vend. Let me go express myself. You know, my art career kind of started while I was in Europe because the team held like some solo shows for me that went really well. Oh, so you uh, went to Europe from US? Yeah, I was playing ball over there oh, professionally. Yeah, and wow. then, yeah, I had like a solo show in Germany that was amazing. And I was like, man, I, you know, I, I could make some money doing some art and you know, I need yeah. a break from football. In my head thinking that I'll eventually get back into coaching yeah. and get back into what I thought was my passion. Yeah. And so I did art for a while, I was loving it. And then the coaching jobs came in and I accepted an offensive coordinator job and I was miserable doing the installation packages, the recruiting, all of it. I, I couldn't a minute, figure wait a, out. Wait a minute, you told me at, at lunch that that was at one point what you thought it was going to be. All right. That, no, that's where you thought you wanted to be. Right. You get there and it's just like, boom. Yeah. And I'm like, like man, you know, I'm not having, I like, this is, and I've been, you know, breeding myself for this role. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm like, why do I hate this job? Like, this should be everything that I want, that sounds you familiar. know? And, and, and then one night I just kind of had an epiphany and I was like, you know what? I've been doing art my whole life. Like I love art so much. Maybe it's the actual love of my life and football has been my hobby. And I just had those reversed and, and think and like with that epiphany, I woke up the next day, called the team, quit. That's bold. And I had got my PPP loan from my art business that I had been claiming for a couple years. And then I came across this Craigslist ad for this place and it was like the exact same amount. And I yeah. was like, Man, I'm starting an art gallery. Why not? <laughs> Man, and like, cause I taught classes everywhere <laughs> and I had the custom clothing business and I was like, well, I got several different revenue streams already yeah. built to go in. Like, let me just start it. And then a couple months into it, the city kind of let me know that it was the only black owned gallery open. And it was only one of two in Texas after quarantine. Wow. So it was like, wow. it like cut out from, from me like my individual artistic aspirations yeah. to what I could do for the community. And That's like dope. when I made that transition, the gallery blew up. That's what's up. As a responsible business owner, you're like, hey, this is responsible. I got people I gotta take care of. Yeah. So now I need to I need to step up here. But it didn't go as 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 you planned. Right. And for me, those stories are super important because if anything, like it'll avoid us making any mistakes. 
down the road, yeah. but more importantly, finding some space that like, where people can say, hey, I can come here and I can refer my friend and this is somewhere where I know for sure they're gonna take care of me. So without further ado, I, I wanna ask, man, I mean, there's a good, bad and ugly, man, when it comes to stories, man. I want you guys, to, I want you to share, you know, people, your experiences, you know, from the grant side to it, from, and no holds barred, man. Feel free to say it however you feel. Yeah. I, I kind of want to hear that that aspect of stuff with your journey. You don't ever have to worry about me me holding back for sure. I speak my opinions as, as often as loud as possible for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard with the with the with the grant world in particular, because there's a lot of competition. Obviously, people want the free money. Yeah. Our particular road here, we have a huge community footprint. We do <gasps> as much as any creative business here in Austin and I you know out of the 15 grants that we've applied for we maybe we got one you know so it's like there there needs to be some situation where you can actually in real time they can expect or they can see how businesses like are affecting the community and you know before they're giving out these grants because I feel like there could be a sliding scale where like they can't just deny a business like the art gallery because of, especially if they state this is what their grants for and, and a business that, you know, does all of that and shoots that out the water, like they should 100% never be denied for that grant. You know who what did I mean? You use so, for the grants? As far as like who did I have write them or which grants did I apply for? I mean, both, well, yeah. Well, so we had a grant writer, our PRs, any PR that we have employed is also responsible for helping write grants and things like that. My partner also is graduated with grant writing. Okay. So, um, but yeah, we also like, there's a several, like there's the art commission, like all people, we know people on the board that helped us, you know, these are the points that you want to hit and everything. We've yeah. had like great applications. Yeah. And, and still like, and we knew they were great because the one grant that we got, we got a perfect score on it. Wow. And I'm like, okay, we're writing all these grants like this. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, like a no brainer to you. It's cool. like follow the same recipe. Right. Yeah. 100%. Right. And all you have to do is change up and just hit on the points because they have those grading scales with those grants. So like they want to hear you say this or they want to hear you say it like this. They want you to represent this. And they put those like you can research grants and find out those points and just make sure when you're typing that information, you just hit those points. Yeah. You should be able to get every, especially with how much we're doing in the community. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't go that way. Was that your only financial product that you tried to attain? And was that your only experience that you have? Other Before ones? then, yes, because I, I bootstrapped this entire thing. And then I have the expansion, like we, we've expanded three times now. And I'm like, I could see the rush coming in. I'm like, yo, we need to be bigger. We need to be able to maintain, yeah. we need to, we need more employees, all that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, let's you know let's get some grants let's apply for some grants for those exact reasons to create jobs and to create a bigger creative space for the community and okay. things like that and so a lot of the grants I, I completely thought were full foolproof because we had people on the board and everything like that that helped us do it and that was a business lesson that i learned to you know not count your chickens before they hatch mm -hmm. obviously so i expanded and and then those grants didn't come through and you know that's okay but then it it backdoored it with a couple slow months mm -hmm. at the gallery so it was like you know stressful and i was like man i need to uh i might have to take out a loan and i've never took out a loan and i was like well let me pull out some loans well i ended up pulling out a loan with a company that told me that they report they didn't report mm -hmm. but then also not realizing that it, and this is just kind of a number that i made for myself when you're pulling out a loan, say if you need 10 grand, you should pull out like way more than that if you're gonna do the loan. Because if something goes wrong and you're stuck and you dish that 10 grand, now you're just stuck in these payments with no padding. You know what I mean? So knowing that in hindsight, I think the first loan I pulled out was 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 20. And I should have pulled out with all the expansion and employees, everything, I probably should have pulled out 30. That way I would have had like three four months of padding where that loan's paying for itself yeah. until we can you know everything else takes off until we turn return back to that you know profit margin so that was a lesson that i learned but also in that situation there's the interest rates are crazy and you think you're getting a good interest rate people aren't really you know they're selling stuff too so they want to get you at like the highest rates possible yeah and we just ended up in a situation where you know we're just paying stupid amounts of money every month just to pay off, you know, loans in perfect, good, you know, standing and everything like that. But it's cutting into the profits now. And you're like, 
And I didn't even need to be in this situation. I could have, no. I definitely could have found a better way to go about this, to not even deal with loans and predatory lending and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And I know that now. Yeah. So there's different products out there, like lines of credit. I always suggest the very, the very first, because it's a it's something that the bank holds on their side. You do pools on it, draws as you need, and a lot of the times it has it has different APRs that are a little bit more friendly. Yeah. And that's the best best. Another one is like term loan pretty straightforward yeah. hey you have a certain amount of times kind of like how a car loan yeah. works kind of the same aspect you okay. your monthly there's no weekly behind it that's kind of the gist of what we're trying to do yeah. like at first we know we're not going to be this hope like I, I know we got this vision of being like this this education hub this payment system lending ecosystem we're starting at lending right. with our first phase yeah. we're finally great news we're going to be able to with this partnership that we're hoping to secure we're hopefully going to be able to offer what do you think i mean i want you to be honest with me if there's something there that you didn't like i know i told you a little bit about the mom test i want you to throw it at me man. this <laughs> is at the moment i want you to make sure that you put it out there man for that yeah i mean there's not uh i mean it definitely is a situation where you want to see those things put into action because it i mean all of it sounds amazing yeah. and ideal of you course. know what i mean it sounds like a perfect world and a lot of times in business those aren't true but then there's there is going to be those businesses that hold themselves to that standard and those ones usually stand the test of time you know but you know all those things sound great i mean i we do a lot here in the community so being able to to be able to donate back to somebody that is doing good things in the company by every like all the foot traffic that we have that's spending money here like that's absolutely amazing to know that some parts of those transactions are actually going to go to help. That's a huge, I've never heard that before, especially from a, a POS system, but the, the education part of it, I mean, obviously if I would have met you guys first and I would have got a loan through you guys and then had the education, I'd be in a whole different situation right now. So like I said, it sounds like a perfect world. I just want to see you guys, you know, be able to, to make it happen. No doubt on that, man. It's been a mission, man, for the last year. A little bit of the journey of like internally, I don't share this with a lot of people, but doing a startup is not like the easiest. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really hard, right? Yeah. But it's hard in the aspect of, there's some things that that really resonate with me with what we're trying to do with the, the free education option of it. Like, you know, everybody's an expert when mm -hmm. it comes to startups, I feel. <laughs> you meet a lot of those people in it. <laughs> and for me, I'm a, I'm a real old school Texan. I like putting my money where my mouth is. Yeah. That's why I invited you to that. Um, on March the 10th, we're doing a pop-up event with the local catering business. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of lending platforms that really put, like, that's why I like SBB. They put the money where their mouth is. They're saying, hey, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that you guys are supported. What do they do? They came here and they showed out, right? right? Same kind of concept with us. We're over here teaming up with small businesses. I want to give the last moments of this interview for you to, you know, kind of give a shout out to your business and invite people out so they can experience <laughs> What I was privy to, which you said that you're honored for being a part of this interview. No, no, dude, we're honored, man. We really feel, we're really appreciated that you gave us an opportunity to get your story out there. So without further ado, man, I would love for you to go and kind of give a shout out to your business one last time. Yeah, for sure. Rich is our gallery. You know, it's richesart.com. We do comedy nights, jazz nights, poetry, our Let's history go. lectures, block parties, art classes of all types. We're, we're literally here for any type of expression. Um, we definitely prioritize putting underrepresented art forms to the forefront, specifically, you know, the, you know, black and brown art in this town that, that is kind of being pushed out because of the way the city's growing. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's, if, even if you want to go into the, just the cultural aspect, those are American products and we want everyone to be proud of those American cultures and races and everyone comes here and celebrates everybody but yeah you can come here be intentional hang out with us Instagram's Riches Art Gallery so I love that and it's R-I-C-H-E-S-A-R-T um, Riches yeah a little play on words like Riches I like yeah. I like that Yeah, uh, sure. it's kind of like what we do with money if everybody's like money I'm like no it's more I, I got it because the Spanish word for coin is yeah. moneda okay. so I did it that and then people like especially in the uh, black community with some of my partners they're like so it's Monify right and I'm just like, <laughs> like hey let's roll with it because with the Spanish community they're like Monify and I'm like hey it works so right. I love what you That's did with cool. the Riches Art Appreciate it. No, yeah, you guys, 
please come out here and support man this is a great this is a great establishment great pieces of art the best way they can they can purchase the art online right yeah and art's then online in person. are you coming come into the shop and give you a heads up guys you can't take the art right off the bat Rich was telling me when you buy a piece of art, you put a sticker, you don't put the sticker on the art, you put the sticker above the art, and then you gotta come back to what's called an exhibition. Hey, art gallery, we got hey. a, we have an exhibition. <laughs> that show stays up for two months. You know, you know, that means that art stays up for two months. Yeah. I mean, you can think if it was the other way around and we have like an exhibition and then people are buying art and then we got like 15 <laughs> empty spaces. <in> the <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm, I'm an artist at heart, man, but I, I've never, like, I, I barely got into a place where I can purchase little pieces of art man and it's so funny because i was over here like wait a minute i can't buy my stuff like this don't make no sense but it makes sense now you explained it to me a little haha -ha moment for y'all but yeah. hey rich thank you man of course thank brother. you man appreciate uh, y'all guys check out rich's art gallery 2511 east 6th street awesome man thank you so much brother. of course y'all have a good one take Peace. care